Coach, how are you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so I actually wanted to ask about a specific player. I'm sure you'll get, you'll get bigger picture questions coming up here. But um, maybe on Donaldson, you know, uh, a lot of people seem to be asking about him. What's his status? Like, if he has a good week of practice, could he start? Are you just looking to get some reps here and there? Like, where do you sort of see him maybe fitting in at this point? Yeah, we're trying to be as careful as we can with Devon. Um, and that's something that that we both have kind of expressed in the offseason going in, into now is um, his his rehab has been going well. He just got cleared a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, so we're in a good place with him right now. Uh, like anything, it's going to determine how you do in practice. Uh, as far as whether he starts or not, it would probably take him just totally blowing away uh, the guys and, and killing it this week. But um, he's a guy that I would like to slowly mix in the games, slowly uh, slowly get him back uh, just because we do, we do think very, very highly of him. But at the same time, we don't want to put – all the load on him, and now we start back at square one. Uh, we just kind of want to take it, take it day by day, ease him into it. But he's uh, he's been really good the last couple of weeks, or since Coach, he's been good the last couple of weeks before uh, our shutdown. Coach, we've got David Ferronis from the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, yeah, well, what about those other guards? Um, you know, Jakai Clark he missed a little bit of time uh, before the, uh, the the pause, but um, a steady starter for you at, at left guard. And then uh, your thoughts on Usman Traore coming into that game and and really contributing, uh, playing a solid game at, at left guard, but for the most part uh, against Virginia Tech. Yeah, well, I think I think given the circumstances with Usman, um, Usman was a guy who just came off of injury on that Thursday and <laughs> was cleared, and they essentially played a game without practice. So. Uh, all things given, we're pretty proud of the effort Usman gave, and of course, I mean he would like to play better. I would, you know, I mean all those things, but all the all the situations given, pretty proud of what Usman did, and it, it kind of really speaks to Usman's capacity mentally uh, to stay engaged, even though you start the season as a starting guard, and then Jakai comes in and takes your your place, but yeah, you keep a positive attitude, you stay engaged on what's going on. You're still not cleared from injury, but yet you focus on the possibility that you may have to play. I mean, you step in and play and help out. And uh, I think with Jakai, the thing about Jakai, Jakai's just been steady since day one. You know what you're getting every single week with him. Um, and and Jakai's a guy that that is always going to be a factor in what we're doing here because he's just steady, reliable, uh, and a very all-around good player. Coach, we've got David Lake from inside the U. David, go ahead. Coach, I was wondering if, if in your assessment of this season as a whole, if, if in your opinion the line has been better with pass protection or run blocking from what you've seen? Depends what game you're talking about. Um, I would say um, I would say the Virginia Tech game was definitely run blocking. Uh, pass blocking was a major issue in the Virginia Tech game. Um, I think all in all, I, I mean, from where we've been at, I, I would like to think we've improved in both uh, from last year. Uh, but I think the the thing that really needs to still take off is the run game. Um, we've been able to we've been able to run at times when we situationally like you look back and you look back on the pit game and we had the ball. I think all the three minutes of the fourth quarter in the pit game, we're able to to run the football and, and keep it out of Pitt's hands and do some things like that. You look at the NC State game, we're able to ice the game, run the ball uh, at the end of the game. Um, but you look at the Virginia Tech game, we weren't. Um, so, so there have been times where we've we've been good here or there. We've shown flashes, but we're really we're not as consistent as we need to be in either phase. In your experience, have is it unusual to have a line that might be slightly more consistent with pass pro compared to run blocking? It just seems like, you know, an amateur to me, it seems like run blocking would be uh, more suitable to an offensive lineman. Yeah, I think I mean, both those things are, are full offensive deals um, from the fact of usually offensive line, when you give up sacks, I think the offensive line get too much credit for that <laughs> and the fact of they get too much blame. But at the same time, if you don't give up any sacks, they probably get too much credit uh, in the fact of, hey, so there's some games or some of those games early on where we didn't allow any sacks. Well, a lot of it was called the air got rid of the ball quick or – he made a guy miss and scrambled. And in other games there where we may have given up a sack or two and it may have been completely on the fact that it was a covered sack or the fact that Derek held it too long. And 
same thing goes with with the running game. I mean, sometimes running game wise, a, a back can make you look great, or a, a back can make you look bad, or vice versa. A line can make you look bad. So I think I think biggest thing I think the reason we've probably been a little more productive pass protection wise is the fact that as a as a whole, your run game's got to be a lot of people working together, a lot of people on the same page. And, and I think once it clicks, it's going to click. Unfortunately, it hasn't clicked like we want it to yet. Coach, we've got time for a couple more for you. We're going to go to Susan Miller-Degnan at the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how are you? Doing well. How are you, Susan? I'm, I'm great. Um, so you were on the brink of uh, not having enough scholarship offensive linemen last game, I believe. Um, how stressful was that? And how stressful is it week to week now? Um, you know, that's a yeah. question. Yeah. No, I think it's a, it's a very fair question. Um, I think that's spending time in Division Two allows you to, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I, I joked with Coach Diaz and Coach Lashley before the Virginia Tech game. Was, we said, yeah, we think we got six, maybe seven guys who can go play and, and help win this game. And like, well, in Division Two, you're used to having three or four. So, so the fact that, um, I mean, that's kind of the, when you're in a small college ball, that's the way you roll every week is you have six, maybe seven guys who can help you win the football game. And and uh, thankfully and lucky for us that we were able to, to stay healthy and not sustain any injuries that game and be able to finish it the right way. And, and how, I, I'm sure you make plan B, so to speak, right, just in case. Um, how do you feel about this week coming back uh, against, you know, at Duke uh, as far as your offensive linemen and, you know, how confident are you? And, um, like, talk about your plan Bs, you know, just in case. Yeah, so so we're probably the most healthy we've been since UAB, I mean, line-wise. Um, we just had a little bad luck streak uh, right before the everything happened before the Virginia Tech game. But uh, we're really probably the healthiest we've been overall. But – Going into Virginia Tech game, you always want to look at it as you always want to plan for the worst, but expect the best. And um, you always have contingencies as far as people have to cross train. I know Navon was the guy that we had targeted as a six man, and it was a situation where guy like DJ Scaife knew he had to bump out and play tackle if something were to happen to one of the tackles because Navon could play guard. And Usman knew he had to play center if something happened to Corey. So I think a lot of that is you've got to, when you're teaching your guys, you've got to teach the overall the overall picture, not just what you do on your job as one guy. You've got to understand what's the overall scheme, what are we trying to do, and then make sure your coaching ties over and carries over to different positions. That way you can move a guy from guard to tackle or center to guard, and, and we can still function and win a game if we need to. Coach, last one for you is Chris Stock from Inside the U. Chris, go ahead for Coach Justice. Yeah, Coach, curious about Jared Williams. Um, if you have a sense that you think he'll be back next year, I know it'll, it'll be a sixth year, but just if you have a sense on him. Also, transfer portal, is that something that you'll explore in the offseason? And then lastly, Isaiah Walker, just what was he able to kind of do this year? What has he been able to do? Uh, Coach Diaz mentioned he's kind of been dealing with a little health thing at least a while ago. Yeah, I mean, we've had Isaiah, I mean, to your last question, we've had Isaiah some um, on scout team and he, uh, where he's a transfer, he wasn't eligible to play anyhow, uh, but Isaiah shows a lot of upside and hopefully this will be a great spring for him. Uh, it's It's been good though, just to have him to get settled in academically, just to get settled in with how we do things and now it allows him to try and go compete this spring. Um, try, try and go back on your questions now. Um, what was your first and second question? Sorry. No, you're fine. Just with Jared Williams, if you have a sense on anticipating if he'll be back next year and then also transfer portal, is that an option? So, uh, I mean, but really that's Jared's call. I mean, if you had to tell me my decision, I would probably think the fact he would try and, and go. But at the end of the day, we haven't sat down and had those discussions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But Jared's a guy who... He came here for a purpose. He came here to uh, play, and Jared was an old senior as it was. I mean, he's been playing quite a while, and um, so I don't know that that'll be his call. We haven't had those discussions, but I mean, if you had to, if I had to guess, I would I would guess that he would try and leave. Um, 
as far as the transfer portal is concerned, kind of the neat thing about Navon is we can kind of look at Navon like a portal guy in effect of he really hasn't played for us this year or hasn't played for us this year yet. And, I mean, if, if someone could come and say, well, this spring you could add a former high-notch high, high notch recruit who has 30-plus college starts under his belt into the guys you already have, everyone would be excited about that. And I think that's kind of the way we look at Navon is, is he's going to be our transfer guy. And um, I don't think – I think it's portal – outside of that, though, you never turn down a great player. I don't know if it's something we'll actively be trying to do. I don't know if that's something that, that we're, we're trying to, to get into. But if great players show themselves and present themselves, I'm never going to say no uh, to those situations. That's more of a head coach call. But, um, but yeah, we're really happy with Jared, and, and hopefully Navon can be that, that boost like Jared was to us this year.